I wanted to talk a little bit about sustainable investing. And uh, Citigroup has committed to, by 2023, to uh, invest and, and lend uh, $100 billion, if I've got that right, mm -hmm. uh, into different types of investing that will help with um, the environment and um, sustainable um, types of uh, events. And so I wanted to ask you about uh, that, how that's changed your lending and investment philosophy at Citigroup. Sure. Well, thank you, Chad, for having me. And um, I think it's interesting to know that when we set the $100 billion environmental finance goal, um, we started counting toward the goal in 2014. And we actually thought it was going to be a stretch goal. We are like, we don't know if we can make it, but we have 10 years. Um, and in five years, we've financed and facilitated $95.3 billion. So I think when we announce this goal, which we you know, are essentially going to hit in just over half the time, um, we saw it as a signal that we were sending to our clients that we really wanted to be big in the environmental finance space. We saw it as a signal that we were sending to our bankers, with our bankers, um, that we really wanted to sort of double down and engage with clients in this financing in a new way. Um, what I think nobody really anticipated is how rapidly this market would grow. Um, and we really shifted from um, a focus on renewable energy project finance, which is still a really important part of the goal, to um, all of the different sustainable finance products that are now out there, green and sustainability bonds being probably the best known. Yeah. So um, I would say that how our financing has shifted since the onset of this goal in 2014 is really um, representative of how the financial markets have shifted in general, where you increasingly see um, the different financial products being adapted to sustainability and ESG purposes. Um, so we're in the process now of working on our next generation goal, and um, I think realizing that the last two goals we've set, we have hit ahead of target because of this market growth and um, trying to figure out how to make it, you know, even harder for ourselves to in the future and really to stretch ourselves to meet our clients where they're going on sustainability and ESG performance. And, and so do you have a, a dollar figure that's set for your next goal or are you, you sort still of- Still in process. Still in process, okay. And, and let me ask you about uh, within this environment, people, you know, seem to want to engage in sustainable investing, mm -hmm. but every firm seems to have sort of a different way of defining it. And so I'm sort of curious how uh, close the industry is coming to having sort of a standardized way of talking about it. Um, because ESG doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue at times. Right, right. Well, I think different banks are still defining environmental finance slightly differently, but we're starting to see commonly used frameworks. Certainly for green bonds, there's um, commonly used definitions now for what is green, um, to some extent commonly used definitions for sustainable, which would blend together the green and the social. Um, what we've done, and I think each bank looks at their definition of green based on what their business is, um, what we've done is try to define green in a pretty bright green way, and then we disclose um, we disclose a lot related to those definitions. So for city, for the environmental finance goal, we include renewable energy finance, energy efficiency finance, um, sustainable transportation, water quality and conservation, and green building. I think all categories of green that are pretty unassailable in terms of their greenness. Um, I think that you now see interest from a lot of different sectors in doing sustainable finance. So um, as banks are expanding their definitions of green, I think you also see opportunities with investors as well who are um, expanding what they would consider to be green or ESG, um, along with also looking at transition finance more recently and how we're helping our clients to transition to a low carbon economy. And, and let me ask, you know, we're in an environment where investors are saying they want more sustainable options, more environmentally uh, 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 proper options. But we also have people who out there, some of them, the president of the United States, mm -hmm. who, who tend to deny that climate change is happening. And so I'm curious in that type of environment, does it make it a difficult sale or are investors, you know, uh, you know going after this, uh, you know, pretty, pretty welcome? Thing? We've seen investors as very welcoming of this. Um, 
I think that over the past year, we saw um, ESG-linked assets under management increase by about 19%. Um, and I mean, the markets really speak for themselves. Um, I've mentioned, you know, the growth that we've seen in our own environmental finance, and um, it has certainly exceeded projections. We, as just sort of one point of reference, City issued its own green bond, um, our first in January of this year. And um, it was a 1 billion euro denominated green bond, and it was three times oversubscribed by our investors. So I think that um, regardless of when you look around the world at the politics related to sustainability and climate change, I think our clients definitely get it. They see this as an opportunity. They see this as a risk. Um, we see our, our responsibility as helping them to manage those risks, helping them to take advantage of the opportunities, and investors are right there. So, you know, the markets are speaking, I think, and really driving this forward. Thanks so much, Valerie. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me, Chad.